Welcome, everybody, to the ANSA Civil Fem Overview Webinar. Uh, what I'm going to cover today is a overview of the capabilities of ANSYS and Civil Fem combined. The webinar is set up with first just an introduction to, to who we are, who Incocyber is, the developer of Civil Fem, and um, then go through a general overview of Civil Fem capabilities, followed by more details on some of the specialized modules in Civil Fem, namely on bridge construction or analysis, pre stressed concrete, geotechnical material modeling, and uh, detailed modeling of tunneling piles. And then nuclear applications, some of the recent uh, nuclear codes that have been developed specifically for civil fem in the nuclear reactor and containment business. So first, what is civil fem? Civil fem is a pre and uh, solution and post processing software that's fully integrated into ANSYS. It uses the leverages the full capability of the ANSYS finite element solver, allows one to uh, specialize capabilities in terms of solving with uh, user-defined material laws, with uh, adapted modified solution sequences, with a whole series of automated input to allow users in the civil industry to leverage the large strength and capabilities of ANSYS, um, but apply things like code checking, uh, built-in material laws for soil and rock uh, that are not easily implemented in the ANSYS program. The developer of SolFem is Incocyber. Uh, they are the distributor of ANSYS in Spain. They're actually very similar to CA Associates in that we are one of the original ANSYS channel partners. They are also one of the original ANSYS partners. And in fact, their uh, roots to ANSYS go way back to uh, Miguel Angel, their uh, founder, who worked for Westinghouse with John Swanson, the, Swanson, the developer of ANSYS. They have a number of years' experience in terms of the uh, implementation of finite element based solutions in the civil engineering industry. They've been doing code development with SULFEM for about 20 years. They've gone through the strict ISO 9000 certification for QA. They've also been certified by several uh, U.S. companies in the area of nuclear applications as well. Customer base it varies all over the world. Uh, it has uh, a number of users in the U.S. as well as a big concentration in Europe. So what is ANSYS? ANSYS uh, right now is the world leader in finite element simulation. Uh, recent acquisitions have grown the company substantially on uh, the area of fluid structure interaction now. We have the capabilities of fluids simulation of the fluent, and actually there's recent application in the area of, of electromagnetics with ANSOFT. So what SOLFEM gives us is the leverage of the full capabilities of ANSYS, uh, which is got the ISO 9000 QA certification, combination with the SOLFEM applications uh, in the same area with the full capabilities of um, SOLFEM with the nuclear uh, QA capabilities uh, such that they've been gone through the audit process and be, been confirmed by Westinghouse and Ariva. How does SULFEM and ANSYS interact? The two programs uh, basically are mated together. They talk to each other throughout the uh, solution analysis. From the front end perspective, there is a SULFEM database that gets created. The SULFEM database is linked directly with the ANSYS database, uh, and so that you can pass data back and forth between ANSYS and SULFEM. On the solution side, there are modules within SULFEM 
for capabilities such as modeling a uh, user-defined creep. Uh, there are material laws for specialized material laws from the area of soils and rock. On the post-processing side, uh, Solfim has added some unique capabilities in terms of load case combinations and also added code checking capabilities for a large number of codes, uh, both U.S. codes as well as European, as well as uh, Asian and even Australian codes. So current Solfem distributors uh, all over the, the world, uh, in North America, uh, CA Associates, we are um, probably the largest in, uh, distributor in terms of, of number of licenses we've sold, number of customers we interface with. Um, just a picture of our location in Middlebury, Connecticut, some of our staff, as well as our training facility. So who is CA Associates? We're one of the first uh, original ANSYS channel partners. We actually started uh, supporting GE way back in the early 80s. Um, we do both consulting work, uh, teaching training classes, as well as the sales and support of ANSYS and Civil Femme, uh, as well as uh, software in the uh, CFD world and also in the electronic packaging area. In terms of some of our background, uh, we've been doing consulting services for 28 years. Uh, we do a lot of ANSYS training as well as SolarFem training. We can do this uh, customized uh, either at our facility or on-site at your location. Um, we do mentoring where we will solve your problems, provide you the solution, and you can then take that solution and leverage it for your particular application as well. Some of the consulting projects we've worked on in the past, um, probably the most notable was the investigation of the thermal structural collapse of the World Trade Center towers. Uh, we've also been heavily involved in uh, nuclear applications and consulting, looking at the replacement of steam generators through uh, carving a hole inside of a post-tension concrete containment building also done work in the area of pre-stressed concrete pipes and concrete dams. Some of our senior staff from a variety of different locations uh, and various different universities, all of our uh, engineers have at least an advanced degree and multiple years of experience in solving real problems. Strengths of ANSYS, ANSYS being the leader in finite element solutions. Uh, it has a very large library of materials, over 200 different element types available in ANSYS. It has the ability to solve uh, linear and nonlinear material uh, solutions, uh, linear and dynamic uh, solutions, as well as thermal solutions. In, uh, thermal stress applications. Uh, some of the capabilities in terms of the nonlinearities, uh, there's a whole series of contact elements for modeling interaction between our parts, uh, material plasticity creep. Uh, we can deal with birth and death to model construction sequences, and a lot of that is automated with the civil femme front end. In the area of structural dynamics, we can look at a response spectrum type solution a uh, harmonic response solution, uh, and then a transient dynamic solution either using mode superposition or running a full transient nonlinear contact, plasticity creep, uh, earthquake simulation, for example. And because ANSYS is equipped with a, the ability to solve on multiple processor machines and it works very efficiently with large models, uh, we can solve very large models over a very relatively short duration of time. Uh, just as an example, I ran a nuclear containment structure analysis which had, uh, I think, about a million degrees of freedom, and I ran it over a 20-second earthquake simulation, 4,000 time points, and ran on a dual 
quad core machine, so I actually ran on seven processors and the solution ran. It took up a couple of weeks to run, but that's something that would have taken six months or a year to run on a single processor uh, machine that wasn't necessarily efficient with solving large scale problems. ANSYS has very efficient methods in terms of meshing as well as uh, high end graphics for post processing. So what do you get with CivilFem? Well, first you get access to the full suite of ANSYS capabilities. On top of that, you have the ability to use the standard sections that are predefined in CivilFem. You can specify just the particular wide flange shape and the properties will automatically be calculated and correlated to whatever element type you select to use. There's a series of different beam elements for instance, for the AISC sections. Uh, you can access material laws, material laws being the material law used in the actual analysis as well as the material information used in the code checking. All of that is built in for a whole series of materials, steel, concrete, soils, uh, reinforcing steel, pre-stressing steel, etc. And then on the solution end, there are a number of modules that have been developed in CivilFem specifically for uh, the bridge industry, uh, predefined modules for very rapid construction of very complicated bridge models, uh, pre-stressed concrete allowing you to model the paths of the uh, tendons that don't have to line up explicitly with the finite element grid. Uh, losses can be taken into account for the pre-stressing as well as the post-tensioning. Uh, losses are a function of, for instance, the distance from the abutment, the angle and length of the tendon. And this solves the exponential equation. It'll take the forces computed based on these tendons and apply them specifically to the correct uh, nodes within the model. Geotechnical applications, including the operation of modeling tunneling simulations, uh, nuclear applications, including the ACI, uh, recent codes 490 and uh, um, for both nuclear and in nuclear reactor. Uh, some various different applications that Civil Fem has been used for, anything from the wind industry to unique building structures to bridges uh, to dams. Uh, to uh, layered construction type of uh, composite bridge structures, uh, just to name a few illustrated in this figure. Uh, we also have capability of modeling uh, breakwater, uh, another tunneling. Uh, Civil Fem and ANSYS were used in terms of modeling the bird's nest, the Olympic Stadium in China, uh, and any kind of unique uh, frame type structures, there's some automated modules for creating very fast and efficiently uh, predefined truss, multi frame structures, geotesic domes, etc. So, Civilfem module uh, can be thought of as broken into the intro module as well as the high end modules in terms of the bridge. So, we'll start with the, civil mo the intro module. Uh, what's included in here is the material library, uh, the beam and shell, both uh, pre and post processing, uh, code check capability, load case combination capabilities, as well as integration with SAP and FLAC 3D, which is a high end soil mechanics code. Unlike ANSYS, when you first start up Silifem, you can define a unit structure that makes sure that your units are consistent throughout your analysis. Uh, Silifem leverages the internal ANSYS capability in terms of geometry and meshing, so you would need to specify those correctly. Pick your appropriate unit system. You can either use standard SI units, British units, or you can make your own combination of length, time, force, uh, pressure, stress units. The next step would be to select your codes. Uh, you can select different codes for steel reinforcing concrete, pre-stressed concrete, and uh, seismic applications. If you look here under reinforced concrete under the pull-down shown, they're illustrating some of the different codes, the Australian, Chine, Chinese, as well as ASHTO uh, capabilities. 
in the area of material libraries, uh, these material libraries can be linear, they can be nonlinear, they can be time dependent. Uh, what CivilFem does actually is leverages ANSYS capability to incorporate temperature dependent material properties and it converts these internally to time dependent material properties so you can model the curing of concrete, for example, and you can specify either the predefined material laws built into CivilFem or you can define your own time rate and change. Uh, for various different properties, such as the modulus as a function of time and the curing of concrete. You can also look at high-end concrete uh, response, such as cracking and crushing. So there are a number of different material laws and capabilities. When we get into the nice details of material, you notice that there's an analysis diagram as well as design diagram, so we can look at the material response from the analysis perspective, the data needed for ANSYS to solve the series of equations, and then from the civil fem perspective on the back end of post processing, are there any specific design requirements that are needed? Those would be specified up front as part of the material data. And again, there are a whole series of materials that are already built in, a large library of materials. Simply accessing those by a couple of clicks, you can access that full capabilities of those different materials. So we look at we can have various different materials. Uh, we can specify the time at which those materials become active, so we can automate the process of birth and death or construction sequence. We can also develop what we call correlations. Um, for correlations, we can say that we need to define a uh, we can define a relationship such as a penetration test. Uh, num number and correlate that to a equivalent modulus. I had a question from the audience was for the dual quad core CPU calculation, there's the additional licenses needed. Uh, the licensing would be on your ANSYS end of your license. So for ANSYS, you get right now two processors as part of an individual ANSYS license. Uh, you can add additional licenses uh, for ANSYS or additional uh, solver licenses with the high performance computing module, um, and those are sold as independent entities. Since CivilVem uses the ANSYS solver, there wouldn't be any additional cost on the, from the CivilVem perspective. Moving on with other materials, some of the material laws are developed and specifically for uh, various different codes. So they bring up the particular requirements needed for those codes. Uh, and a list of some of them are available on this slide, anywhere from British standards to European standards uh, to ACI and AISC. They're actually not listed here, it would be some of the nuclear codes, the ACI 349 and 359. You can also develop your own material library of materials that you use. They can be either totally generated from scratch or they can be a hybrid of some of the materials that come directly from the Civil Fem library. So you can make some modifications to some of the properties and store that as your own unique material law. Uh, some little more detail on some of the material input. And this is one of the real strengths of Civil Fem is the ability to, uh, within seconds, point and click and access a wide, large number of material properties. Those material properties can be in any unit structure you want. So from the user perspective, that will help you in terms of um, rapidly developing uh, some complex models of a com combination of concrete and steel. Nonlinear material laws, as I mentioned, they can be uh, time dependent. Uh, this can be probably the most common one is in the concrete area. So, for instance, in bridge construction, we have an incremental construction sequence we want to simulate. We can simulate the true response of the concrete, the curing process. Not only can we re can we calculate the equivalent of the change in modulus, but we can also look at the effects of creep and shrinkage as well. And so as each particular section gets poured, that data gets updated. We have relative stiffnesses defined correctly between the 
new material, the fresh pour and the existing pour, and how those interact. So which brings us to the next step is the construction sequence process. Uh, the capability in Solfem leverages the ANSYS uh, birth and death, material birth and death capability. Uh, and it automates it to a degree where it's much easier to define. You define in the material properties the time at which your different materials are going to become active. You can run a different series of different time points in terms of you can also have your time-dependent material response in terms of creep or shrinkage, as I mentioned. And so you can simulate in uh, the numerical nonlinear time incremental marching solution the actual uh, solution response of any different point in your model, you can map with the time history post process or that data, data as a function of the loading sequence. Graphically, in the material input library, you can look at the time dependent response uh, predefined in civil fem or make changes to this. In this example here, we're seeing uh, a log scale response of the um, material strength. We can also leverage the nonlinear material law in so or in ANSYS uh, for concrete, which allows for the simulation of concrete crushing and cracking. Uh, this particular material law is uh, located within the ANSYS uh, GUI of interfaced with the solid 65 reinforced concrete element. You can model the nonlinear properties in terms of cracking and crushing the concrete, as well as you can also simulate uh, material plasticity in the rebar, which is smeared within these concrete elements. And here's an example of a section of a nuclear containment building subjected to a high level of a temperature, uh, temperature accident kind of condition and the representation of where regions will be cracked or crushed. Uh, actually, this is a hybrid picture. It's also showing some other <clears throat> images of, for instance, the response of an airplane impact on a concrete containment building, what the cracking and crushing behavior would be under that response as well. You notice that you can model the open crack as well as a closed crack. When a crack closes, when it closes, the Compressive strength becomes back active. However, once a crack has occurred, it'll take zero tensile strength to reopen that crack. So it can be used in a time marching solution where cracks potentially open and close, and their response will be different after they've opened. The directions of the crack are oriented based on the principal, um, principal planes where the first crack will appear where the max tensile, perpendicular to the max tensile, uh, stress, and once that exceeds the tensile capacity, that crack will form. Other areas of, it, of material modeling is in the area of modeling creep and shrinkage. Uh, there are several capabilities here. There's basically two methods that can be used. Uh, one is a step-by-step -step method where we'll actually time march through the solution. The other is what's called an effective modulus method. So we're going to run a linear solution, but we're going to modify the modulus of elasticity to account for the effects of the fact that the section has been reduced uh, based on the creep and or combination of the creep and shrinkage. For structural Steel applications, we can look at the a linear or nonlinear material response. The plasticity can be included as a bilinear curve or multilinear curve. Uh, we can include the effect of Bausinger's effect in terms of cyclical loading. So all of the features and answers can be incorporated and integrated through the SULFEM material library input. One of the real strengths of SOLFEM is its large uh, library of soil and rock material laws. And as you can see here, here's just a rough list of a number of different soil laws, anywhere from gravel to silt to peat, uh, as well as for each of these, there are some detailed information as well. 
and the input can be anything from specifying explicitly uh, solution or analytical uh, material properties such as modulus, elasticity, Poisson's ratio, or more standard soil testing information such as cohesion angle and standard penetration test data. The other thing that you're provided with and the help and the documentation in SOLFEM is when you go to use one of these reference material laws, it's going to give you a little more different information about it, uh, some of the applications. So, for instance, for using this material for piles or micropiles, it gives you some recommendations in terms of which data you need to define under which menu system, which tab that data would be uh, uh, needed. You can actually, for those of you who are familiar with the ANSYS Workbench front end, uh, it's not totally integrated into work into uh, civil film, but what you can do is, based on the command blocks, is you can insert any civil film capability directly into a workbench through the ANSYS input scripts. Since, as I mentioned, civil film is driven by commands, the civil film command structure is a tilde in front of any command makes it a SOLFEM command. They can be fully integrated with the ANSYS commands. So in this particular example, integrated into the command block is the ASTM A36 steel material law for that particular uh, component of the workbench uh, finite element model. In terms of standard sections, we have a whole list of sections for I-beams for uh, European, various different European settings, such as these HE uh, sectors. We can develop composite structures. They can be made up of your own user-defined sections, or they can be made up of predefined sections. So on the right-hand side, you see there's a composite bridge section, and it's got a slab on the top and three I-beams underneath and that can be defined as a single section for a, if it's incorporated in terms of modeling, for instance, an entire bridge structure, we can create a single beam element to represent that cross section. In the area of the bridge design, there are a series of modules that have been automated that allow you to predefine typical uh, bridge sections, either open sections or closed sections. They can have holes in them. Um, or they can be like a, a box type section as shown in the lower left hand corner. There also are some templates to automatically design your full bridge for you. The arch bridge section shown in the middle, there's suspension bridge, arch bridge, there's a number of different options there in terms of predefined bridge sections where the input is limited to maybe 15, 20 different numbers you type in, you click a button and immediately you have a bridge design. Also available are truss type sections. You see where in the lower right hand corner some of the different variations and sizes. And one of the beauties of SOLFEM, since it's command driven, it integrates with ANSYS, you can take advantage and leverage some of this automation or you can ignore it and build everything from scratch or you can do a hybrid where I'll take advantage of some of the predefined sections but then I'll add my own unique uh, parts of my structure, maybe buy more of uh, defining local different um, beams or slabs or whatever components to uh, create a structure that may be a combination um, of input from these different areas. There may be elements that are used in the model that aren't necessarily civil fem uh, integrated. That's fine. You just can't do code checking on those, but there's fully free to be in the particular analysis sequence. There's a Sections Explorer. It allows you to make modifications to your sectors. It allows you to do superposition of various different sectors. You can also export these as a 2D finite element mesh if you want to make some modifications or use those down the road. Uh, some examples of some of the hot rolled sections. And there's over 4,000 predefined sections available. And the nice thing about these, when you prescribe your units system up front, you can have these sections converted to whatever unit structure you want, whether it be SI or English. Another capability in terms of the material and section 
information is to uh, have Civil Fem aid you in selecting the section that meets your particular requirements. So if I had the requirement that I wanted a certain cross-sectional area, certain moments of inertia, I can specify those in the property search and use the search option, and it will try to fit and come up with uh, the sections that best represent those material characteristics or that uh, section stiffness characterization. Uh, you can also define a section, you know, I-beam sections that can come from a file. Uh, we have a question that says, do you have a command for corrugated steel deck with concrete cast in place composite slab, i.g. layered shell element with proper assignment materials to each layer? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Actually, there are some capabilities in Civil Fem that will also allow you to correctly model the slab being defined, uh, or I mean the, the corrugated deck being defined, the slab being poured, and actually getting the correct interaction where initially the steel uh, corrugated deck is defined, it's carrying a load. You pour the concrete. When the concrete is first poured, it has no stiffness as that stiffness, as the concrete cures, it increments the stiffness. So there's a number of different predefined geometries. Uh, you would you can take the sections that are available in um, in Solfem. Uh, in terms of the detailed corrugated shapes, I have to look and find out exactly what's available. But the nice thing is if you created one section, you can copy that section data. So there's a lot of automation tools where you should have a minimal amount of input up front to create pretty complex sections to define. So here's user defined a section here. A hot rolled section is just an example where you can use the standard properties that come out of SULFEM or you can actually modify the properties as well. You can create your own user-defined section. Uh, here's a user, uh, a generic section. This section could be modified. If you look in terms of the question of copying sections, I'll go back up. We can actually use this merge operation, so I can merge a whole series of sections, or I can create a 2D finite element mesh of any section I want. You can also edit the existing sections, or I could take out a section of the flange, for instance, of my I-beam. Uh, for concrete sections, you can specify not only the section information, but also the rebar orientation. You can specify both the longitudinal rebar as well as the shear or torsional rebar. And here's an example where a series of sections were copied. This was a composite section, so the I-beam was copied three times to make up this section. So you could easily take some kind of geometry and copy and make a whole series of segments. Cross-sectional information is stored. You can write this out to a file. Uh, use this at any point down the road in your analysis sequence. You can also merge, make a composite section with a number of different predefined sections and uh, connect them together. You can make your sections variable. So if I have a, a tapered cross-section, I can use this as a method. You can also take your section how you're going to model your, your actual fine element model. So, so for instance, in the bridge area, you can either model your entire structure as a beam element you can model them as shell elements, or you can model them as 3D solids. So you have the ability to simulate your structure with one of those three options. And the nice thing is you, don't, you only need to define the geometry once, and then you can simply tell ANSYS how are you going to take that geometry and orient it into the structure. One of the real strengths in the post-processing side of Civil Fem is the ability to deal with um, performing design checks. Design checks, uh, number one, you can take and create standard shear, bending moment diagrams. Uh, then you can also do for the concrete sections, for instance, you can create interaction diagrams 
uh, looking at the effect of the axial and bending response. Uh, you can also do load case combinations using superpositions as well as uh, defining load factors for performing those operations. The load factors can be predefined or there can be variable load factors. So you can say, for instance, which is the load combination that's going to create the maximum moment at this particular location in my model. The code checking and the load combination are driven through wizards, so you can click and drag, cut and paste, uh, input some of the data for that. In terms of the post-processing, you can plot either which components pass or fail, or you can also process the utilization. So how far are we from the ultimate capacity of that particular section? We can specify things like if you're looking at a structure that may be uh, subjected to a buckling criterion, you can specify the unsupported length of that structure so uh, SolarFem can evaluate the code uh, checking appropriately. So that's a brief uh, intro to the main module or the introductory module. Uh, now I'm going to spend the, the remaining uh, 20 minutes or so talking about the various uh, specific modules. Uh, first, the bridge and pre-stress capability. So again, we can leverage all of the material laws um, but are in, that are already defined in SOLFEM as well as the cross-section information. Uh, what the bridge module also brings is a ability to lay out your bridge in plan and section view, uh, the ability to use some of the common bridge sections, uh, the ability to convert your model into either a beam shell or 3D solid model. So you may use a beam model for the entire uh, full structure of the bridge uh, and also in the early preliminary design. <clears throat> and then you could form for a sub-modeling approach, uh, take out a small section to uh, incorporate a full 3D model, or you may use a combination, or you may use a shell model. Uh, one of the other advantages of the bridge module is a ability to automate the process of defining the vehicle loads. Uh, it has some of the AASHTO standards in terms of uh, uh, specific types of, of vehicles and also the sequ sequential operation of trying to figure out the worst scenario, worst location of that vehicle on the bridge to uh, create the highest uh, or weakest uh, member on the structure. <clears throat> Load combinations are available as well as the ability to model um, the construction process. Some of the predefined modules uh, that are showing a section view in the lower left hand corner where we can pull out forces and moments or stresses and strains both in the concrete as well as in the reinforcement. Uh, an example of a predefined module for a suspension bridge is shown in the rest of this figure. Different cross sections available in terms of the box and hollow uh, section. You can specify the number of holes, the geometry of the box section. You can also look at detailed uh, calculations. You can create detailed models and incorporate those into code checking as well. I mentioned the ability to model the vehicle loads in the um, bridge module. Uh, and they can be defined either as a rigid or flexible, so we're modeling either a truck type structure or truck loading or a, a train type loading. And you can automate the process of constructing the bridge and performing the analysis and the automation of the load combinations in the post-processing. The pre-stressing capability allows us to model uh, both pre-stressed and post-tensioned, and we can model the loss along the length of the cable. And the cable actually is defined as an independent beam where its loads are transferred to the underlying nodes and elements, and the mesh between the cable and the actual underlying structure does not have to align itself. So the building could be modeled either with shells or solids, Cables are modeled with this uh, pseudo uh, beam type structure where that data then gets transferred the equivalent forces and moments to the actual 3D model. Construction sequence simulation 
is where we actually first would develop a model of the entire bridge. Next, we would actually um, use the material capabilities with a material alive operation so we can specify what time each of these parts became alive. And we could simulate the incremental step-by-step -step construction and the nonlinear effects and response on how the different portions of the bridge interact with each other during that construction sequence. There are some tools for editing and laying out the uh, tendons if it's a pre-stressed or post-tension structure. All of these are also command-driven, so oftentimes it's advantageous to kind of set up one on your own and then you can take the log file or the input file, the script file that gets created by CivilFem, and you can automate that. You can also leverage any of the ANSYS functionality in that script file by doing, for example, embedding those scripts into uh, if-then-else logic or creating do loops. So post-processing is one of the things we can see is where we have an example here of showing some stresses in a cross-section uh, as well as um, the, the full 3D cross-section of the model. The question is, can you see the underlying ANSYS command embedded in the tilde civil femme scripts or at least how the native ANSYS parameters are calculated from the civil femme input? Uh, if it's a native ANSYS capability, uh, that you're using, uh, you would just have the ANSYS commands would be just standalone. So, for instance, Sulfem doesn't necessarily um, build the geometry. You can use some of the, the Sulfem scripts to do that. Um, you won't actually see the ANSYS commands that were used. Let's say you use one of the Sulfem modules, I guess, for the pre predefined sections. But once the structure is defined, all of the entities, the lines and areas and key points and all the information used by ANSYS uh, would be part of the model. You would have the access then to make modifications to that. I guess kind of thinking out loud, you can actually, there's an option in ANSYS to do what's called an LG write, or you can write out the equivalent log file. So you may be able to do that as well. Uh, but you're, you're fully free to have a mixture of ANSYS input commands and civil fem input commands. Some of the civil fem in input commands call other internal ANSYS features, and some of them simply prescribe and set up uh, the civil fem data. Uh, once that data gets put into the ANSYS database, you're free to interrogate the ANSYS database. Uh, for example, if you define some of the material laws, you can then list the material data that uh, civil fem created, but you don't necessarily have access to the raw ANSYS commands uh, that were generated. However, any of these scripts can be put into some automated sequence. They can be uh, performed. Once you've got that data in the ANSYS database, you're fully free to access leverage ANSYS capabilities such as star get and star v get to extract that data, operate on it. Moving on to the geotechnical module. In the geotechnical module, uh, we can look at the uh, various uh, both rock and soil material laws. They can be linear or nonlinear. There are specific modules for doing slope stability, uh, seepage calculations, uh, pile design, retaining walls, and tunneling, as well as the capability of just modeling large complex models with various different earth pressures. Uh, in ANSYS 12, actually, there's poor pressure capability that's built into some of the new ANSYS elements, and that capability can be leveraged in regards to using your civil FEM as well. So some of the other operations and capabilities in civil FEM uh, under the geotechnical module, we have a integration with a third-party piece of software for modeling rock, which is FLAC 3D. Uh, we do seepage calculations again. Uh, some of the tunneling where we can use and leverage the civil fem birth and death uh, or the ANSYS birth and death capability, which is automated in civil fem. We look at geotechnical 
world in terms of the problem size, one of the things that just do the nature of improved throughput of finite element capabilities, as well as the uh, large scale capabilities of solvers and uh, number of processors we can access, is that uh, in the mid 90s, maybe we're solving 2D models with 1,000 elements. We're now solving 3D complex full foundation models with million element or you know, multi million degrees of freedom solutions. Talked about it earlier in the intro module in terms of the different material laws and the material libraries available within civil Fem. We have material for soil, for, for rock, uh, et cetera. Uh, some of the various modules in the geotechnical application include a pile cap wizard for designing either micro piles or full scale piles. Uh, we have the ability for simulating uh, footings, foundations, dams. Uh, we can model the interaction between a soil dam. It can be a concrete or it can be one of these hybrid dams. And we can model the response of these particular entities. There is a specific wizard set up for modeling tunneling. Uh, allows for the automation, uh, graphical representation of stresses and strains in maybe the uh, various um, beams that may be created, uh, the stiffening parts of the structure, the interaction uh, of the soil, time history relationship of the displacement. All these feature functionalities can be extracted during the time history tunneling simulation. Uh, just an example here showing a couple of examples of uh, tunnels with 2D cross sections. You can extract a 3D model, so incremental approach that can be defined. Uh, take advantage of some of the meshing capabilities in ANSYS in terms of the operation for using sweep meshing. So you define the external cross section sweep through the full depth length of the tunnel. In the area of nuclear applications, Silfem's uh, recently introduced a number of new uh, code checking capabilities. In particular, uh, these are for both the containment and non-containment structures, ACI 349, ACI 359, ASME codes in terms of steel, uh, as well as the AISC uh, code check capabilities. Uh, so now you have a couple different choices in terms of which versions of AISC you want to select for performing code checking. Uh, just an example here is just a little bit of the information about the uh, 359, which is actually a section of the ASME boiler and pressure vessel code, which has been coded at least for the sections um, for um, design uh, based on this article CC3000. Here's just an example of a code check evaluation, a very simplified representation of a containment building. Uh, it shows the lower right hand corner shows that what we we're particular uh, uh, the contouring is for. In this case, it's the reinforcement in the X direction, uh, where X could be the hoop direction, radial direction, depending on how the elements were defined. Uh, so this is saying on the bottom surface of those elements, uh, we have a uh, reinforcement ratio of about six. Uh, so when we went to design this part, if this was the critical loading conditions, we know that we need more reinforcement up in the top uh, ring girder. And that actually would be defined as probably a different geometry in a real containment building. Another capability that was added as part for applications to the nuclear, but also can be used in all facets, is taking 3D solid elements and defining a equivalent shell property for the purpose of doing code checking. Uh, it's very difficult sometimes. You have a 3D brick model. You have uh, stresses and strains at all the individual nodes in the model. How do we turn that into a quantity that we can perform a code check on? Well, what SimilFem does is takes that data and creates an equivalent slice. Uh, so it integrates through the section all of the uh, data forces and moments and creates the equivalent um, 
section property, so now we can plug that uh, linear property into our code checking uh, so we can take the axial shear and moment forces and run that in through, for instance, an ACI code check and determine the amount of reinforcement needed in the two orthogonal directions and top and bottom surfaces of our uh, particular slab or wall. Lots of different applications and other capabilities that can be looked at. Uh, you can use, again, the civil femme material laws. You can incorporate all the ANSYS features in terms of modeling, whether it be 3D models, whether it be beam models, etc. In the area of seismic analysis, we have the ability to do response spectrum analysis. Uh, there is predefined modules, so you can select a different region of the U.S and get the equivalent acceleration. We can do a pushover type analysis in SILFEM. They automated some of the nonlinear uh, pushover simulation as well as the full uh, transient dynamic calculation. Not necessarily related to SILFEM, but I just threw this slide in just uh, as part of our interactions in building the World Trade Center models, uh, CA Associates developed a translator to convert SAP models into ANSYS. And it's something that we have uh, have automated the process for converting things like beams and beam offsets, uh, shells. And at this point right now, we're looking for people that have a model that they'd be interested in providing us as a demonstration case. We can go ahead and convert that model for you see if you like the conversions, and if you had a series of models you want to convert, we can figure out some kind of arrangement that makes sense from both sides. Uh, just another example here showing cross-section that's converted from SAP to ANSYS. Uh, again, the complexities here were mainly with dealing with the beam orientations and beam offsets. They could either be axial offsets or lateral offsets and also setting up, making sure you got beam releases, et cetera. So that concludes this webinar. I'll have Christina open up for any questions if anybody wants to answer them, or you can, of course, continue to use the chat format. Uh, I appreciate those that attended. Um, we will continue with our sequence of webinars. I'm not sure if all these dates are correct. There may be some modifications. I think the bridge one's being moved, but they'll, all those dates are available on our website, as well as some of the ones if you want to go back and uh, listen to some of the other publications. We've taped some of them so we can give you the link for you to download. So I.